Hi, welcome to the Yale University Art Gallery in New Haven, Connecticut. Come on in and have a seat. This is Stories in Art. Please feel free to pause the video whenever you'd like to get a closer look at the artwork. Enjoy! Hello, my name is Martha. Today, I'll be telling a story called The King's New Clothes. It's a story that has been adapted many times. The version I'm telling today is from two sources. One by the medieval Spanish writer Don Juan Manuel, and the other by the Danish writer Hans Christian Andersen. As you listen to the story, I'll share with you two artworks from the gallery. Let's take a close look at them as we begin. This is a print made in the style of a German artist named Albert Dürer. The man in the print is Maximilian I of Austria, who was the Holy Roman Emperor in Europe in the late 1400s and early 1500s. What do you notice about the Emperor's clothes? I notice that what he's wearing has beautiful designs, and I wonder what colors they would be. What else do you notice about him? I notice that he has a serious expression, and he's looking away from us. Now take a close look at this watercolor drawing called Costume Sketch for Anderson Tales. This drawing was made by a Russian artist named Mstislav Dubuzhinsky. What do you notice about the people in this drawing? I wonder if they're working together. As I tell the story, keep looking at the art. Imagine how it might connect to the story and see what other details you notice as you listen. Once upon a time, there was a king who had a big, beautiful palace. He had everything he could want, delicious food, gold decorations, and lots of fancy clothes. More than anything else, he loved to wear brand new expensive clothing. What details can you notice on the king's clothing in this print? I see jewels on his collar and floral designs on his sleeve. One day, two tricksters came to the palace and told the king they were excellent weavers. This is a painting of them. The trickster in the yellow hat told the king, we can make a cloth so fine that only a truly good and noble person can even see it. This sounded great to the king because with this magic cloth, he could find out which of his subjects were good and noble and which ones were bad. With this idea, he set aside a big room for the tricky weavers to make their fabric. The trickster in the red hat told the king, you should lock us up in the room so we can guarantee the quality of the fabric. So the king gave them lots of gold, silver, and silk, and all the supplies they needed. Then he locked them in the room. The tricksters set up their looms and pretended to weave. After a few days of pretending, the tricksters went to tell the king that they had already begun the cloth and that it was beautiful. Even though they were lying to the king, the red-hatted trickster described this pretend fabric in such great detail that the king believed it. The tricksters saw the king's excitement and promised he could see the fabric soon. First, the king sent a servant to see the fabric and report back to him. When the servant saw the tricksters and heard them talking about how beautiful their fabric was, he was shocked to find that he couldn't see it. He didn't dare admit it to the king. So when he returned, he told the king, wow, that was the most beautiful cloth I've ever seen. In fact, any time the king sent someone to check on the cloth, they came back saying how beautiful it was. Nobody wanted to admit they couldn't see it because then the king would think they weren't good enough. Finally, the tricksters said their cloth was ready to be made into clothing. The king was so excited for his fancy new clothes. The red-hatted trickster said, stand still, I need to measure you. Then the yellow-hatted trickster said, step back, I need to cut the fabric. The king was embarrassed that he couldn't see any fabric, 
but he pretended he could. The next day, the tricksters visited the king and helped him put on his new suit. He was surprised he still couldn't see it, but he got on his horse to ride through the city anyway. He wanted to find out who could see his new suit and who could not. That way he would know which of his subjects was good and noble. When he left his castle, he thought he was wearing the finest clothes, but everybody saw the king riding around with no clothes on. Unfortunately, we don't have a picture of what the king really looked like. They all looked around at each other, trying to see if anyone saw the beautiful clothes the king had promised. They were all scared to admit that they didn't see any clothes. But finally, one honest little boy said, Sir, I don't care what you think of me. I think those weavers tricked you. You aren't wearing any clothes. Soon, more people started to admit that they couldn't see the suit either. Finally, they all realized that the tricksters had fooled them. While the king was riding around with no clothes on, the tricky weavers had escaped with all the gold, silver, and silk he had given them. Because of the little boy, the king decided to always tell the truth and not get carried away with pride. Instead of valuing his appearance and fancy clothes, he learned to value honesty. The End One of the artworks we saw today is a portrait. Portraits are pictures of people that tell us something about them. We can tell a lot about the people in portraits by looking at their clothing, special objects they're holding, facial expressions, body language, and setting. Think about how you would want to be shown in a portrait. What would you wear? What special things would you include from your own life? Would you smile? How would you stand or sit? Where would you be? Try drawing a self-portrait or taking a photo of yourself with things that represent you. We hope you have fun making your self-portraits. Thank you for joining us for Stories in Art at the Yale University Art Gallery. We hope you enjoyed listening and looking with our storyteller.